Hello. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again, maybe. <laughs> if you were here earlier today, we're back. Two videos today. We got to finish up some socks. I'm excited. All right, let me get to where I need to be here. Hey, Samantha. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Olivia. Um, hold on. To my channel. There we go. Yes. Hi, everyone. Hey, Alizé. You finished your sock since part one. Yay! I, if you were here this morning, um, which seems like moments ago, does it not? Um, <laughs> I have finished now my uh, toe, I, except for the last little bit of the Kitchener, because I just got, uh, left it so I get a little snapshot, a little picture that I'm going to put on that video here later. But yeah, that one is almost done. I almost have a finished sock. And this one is really close. I've got just a few rounds of ribbing that I'd like to finish up that I'm going to show here in a second. and then. It is all done and ready. So I'm excited to show this to you today. Hey again, good afternoon, twice in one day. I know. So there was a, the reason we're doing two today instead of one today, one tomorrow, is that I have some like events, an event to go to tomorrow. And so that's why I was like, you know what? We'll just throw them both into Friday. Friday will be like, a mega knitting day. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. Toaster's still in the same spot as earlier. <laughs> he is, but you know what? He's actually been to uh, a pet, pet store and got a bath. And I washed his blanket in his bed while he was gone. So everything is now nice and clean. And so he's in the same spot, but he's clean now. So his monthly bath. <laughs> I love it. Um, it's a miracle you finally made it on time. Yay. Hi from Texas. Hi from Nova Scotia. Um, it was moments ago for you because you just watched the recording an hour ago. <laughs> That's funny, Madison. Um, hi, Natalie. Just got back from yarn shopping. Picked out two skeins for your rocket tee. Oh, yay. I wasn't going to make it, but after seeing your finish product, I had to. What colors did you get? Can you describe them to us? Did you get mohair? I really pleased with how mine turned out. It's so cute. Hey, Sarah. Greetings from Germany. Oh, oh my gosh, hold on. When I said Sarah, I thought I said the other thing, you know, the voice recognition thing. <laughs> so it like popped up on my computer. Um, okay, greetings from Germany. First live I could arrange to attend. So happy. Knitting on my first sock, but I don't think I will be able to finish it. Well, Lori, it's so good to see you. Thank you for coming. Good evening. <laughs> and I uh, guess it's afternoon here. Yeah, it's like late, it's like nighttime. So good evening and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, Karen in Denmark. You're crocheting a bucket hat. Very cool. Hey, Georgette. How are you? Um, almost finished a sock. Yay, that's so good. Um, let's see looks great oh thank you hi from california glad to be joining again welcome welcome hi everyone hey hey antoinette hello from india welcome and you have shivers today i know it's like the best day ever hey from kansas i might lose my voice <laughs> i always remember like the first week back to teaching i like your voice it has to like warm up and get used to build stamina. And so I'm like, I wonder if I'm going to lose my voice after today, which would be fine because then I have a recovery day until Sunday, which is our last live event <laughs> on Instagram. Hey, Moonglow Yarn Company. Um, I'm crocheting toe up socks, but you're going to start knitting socks soon. Ooh, that's so exciting. Hey, Alexa. Hi, Natalie. I just finished watching the first recording. Glad to be here live. I'm so glad you're here. Um, okay, so for your rocket tee, you got light gray and a tonal dark blue slash 
purple. That sounds really pretty. Um, can't believe I'm already working on the toe for your second sock. Alizé, whoa! Never knit them so fast in my life. I'm proud of myself. You should be. That's incredible. Amazing. Madison said, hi, Whitney. <laughs> Moon Glow Yarn Company. I ordered yarn this morning. Woohoo! Yay! What's your favorite thing to knit or crochet? My favorite thing to knit or crochet definitely depends. Like, socks are always going to be, like, always always on my needles it seems like that that's been the case for several years socks are always on the needles so in a way that makes them my favorite because i'm always working on them um but other than that like it kind of varies like i'll go through different phases i think i had a shawl phase the last couple of years but now i think i'm in a sweater phase i feel like that's safe to say because i've knit two short sleeve sweaters recently I think that's it this year too but for me that's pretty good <laughs> so i would say i'm in a sweater kick and socks sweaters and socks i like them both hi from the netherlands i'm working on the cuff of my toe up sock same working on the cuff of my toe up sock you finished your socks jessica that's awesome hi from baltimore and pennsylvania um, all done with work, time to relax. Happy Friday, happy weekend. It's like almost the weekend for everybody. I know it's only four o'clock here <laughs> in Eastern time and only one o'clock Pacific time, but we're getting so close to the end of the day Friday. Hey from Mounds, Illinois. Hi, Janet. The middle of Norway, awesome. I have 40 rows on the second sock and then the cuff and heels. Not bad. You're so close, Melissa. Uh, working on my first sock to try a shadow wrap heel. I want to try that one. I've been hearing so many good things. Do I have the pattern for my wedding shawl? Yes, it's actually linked on my Ravelry page. Uh, off the top of my head, I think it's something to do, like something like Midsummer's Night Dream or something like that. Some kind of like Shakespeare reference, I think. I could be wrong. Um, but it is definitely linked on my Ravelry page. If you go back to, uh, or maybe, I wonder if you can search other people's Ravelry pages and just search for shawl on my Ravelry page. Um, but date-wise, it would be 2017. Like summer 2017, maybe June, <laughs> I finished it. I'm not sure. But yeah, I love that wedding shawl, so pretty. Um, do you still crochet as much as you used to? I've never really been like, I never have really crocheted as much as I've knitted, you know? Like knitting has always been the, the top, like most, the thing that I do the most. Um, but I haven't done a lot of crocheting lately. I was doing a lot more crocheting when I was designing crochet patterns. Um, and I've kind of just unintentionally taken a break from that, but I do need to do some crochet because I love it. Um, hi from Germany. Oh, so many people here from Germany. This is great. So glad I made it for the live. I'm knitting the heel of my fourth, did I read that right? Fourth sock for the week. Oh my gosh. You love Toaster. He's right here. I don't know. His bed's in the way of him, but he's back there. Earlier he did have, there you are. Hey buddy, everyone wants you to say hi. He is glaring at me. I was gonna leave his bed right there before it like falls, but yep, he's just sleeping. Earlier he had his head like on the pillow like a human. It was so cute. He's so adorable. Um, shadow wrap heel is a little different than the fish slips kiss heel. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. That's why I really want to try it. Um, doing the heel turn from my third sock. Whoa, wow. These ones are for my mom, so it's going slightly slower. Hey from Cary, North Carolina. I recently tried toe up for the first time, have now finished two pairs that way. Still find the start a bit fidgety, but I'm getting there. Yeah, I know, it is like a little bit, it's more work than just casting on the cuff for sure. But it's nice to get those toe increases, or like toe portion out of the way, heel portion out of the way. And then it's like super easy going from there, right? I find the end of toe up socks to be very motivating to finish the leg, it's so much faster. Um, just finished your shorties, yay! 
I did the shadow wrap heel for my cuff down sock and I love it. Also like the heel pattern from Vanilla is the new black. Yeah, I've heard good things about that too. There's so many great things out there. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about finishing a toe up sock. This morning we finished a cuff down sock, so now we gotta finish a toe up sock, of course. Of course, of course. You're definitely gonna get some New York City noises today because it's Friday and the traffic started two hours ago and it's like reaching its peak. <laughs> um, I like the simplicity of the shadow wrap, we get gaps. Oh, interesting. I'll have to see how I'll have to see um, how that goes. I've never tried it. Working on my first three skein float tote. <gasps> Since you finished your sock last night, yay! I've got some yarn to make a float tote. I need to get started on it. I love, I love, love, love making those. Okay. Boom. All right. Let's take a look at this sock. So this is the sock that if you were here on Tuesday or if you watched back Tuesday's video, we started this sock at the toe. I guess it would make more sense if I went like that. <laughs> we started the sock at the toe. We learned how to do the Judy's Magic cast on and do our increases. And I just, I showed you my preferred method. This is of course not the only method. And then we got started into the socks. Um, so I am knitting a modified version of the color palette socks. It's a free pattern, it's on Ravelry. Um, and the original version is cuffed down with a heel flap and gusset, a few other different things about it. And so I have made mine toe up and I did the fish lips kiss heel and I have made mine so that I could use the six colors from Moon Glow Yarn Company and you all helped me pick out the order and I think we did a great job. I think it looks awesome. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, modifications that I made. So the pattern has you use seven sections and I wanted to do six for the six colors. So what I did is I was like, okay, I know how many rows, rounds I need for my foot. Let me subtract the parts in between and then whatever number of rows I had left, I divided it by three, tweaked it a little bit and that's how I got 15. So I've done 15 rounds of each color all the way up and it's looking really cute. These are not my best fitting socks because I did mess around with the gauge, um, but they went really fast because I only have 48 stitches. So I'm planning to make the second to this pair. They're Again, they're not my best fitting socks, but they're all right. And then I'm gonna try next time to use the same yarn, the Moon Glow Yarn Company. It's an 80-20, so it's a little thicker than like 75-25, but it's not as thick as some of the others. So. I actually feel like I shouldn't have gone up to a size two. Um, but you know what, it's okay to experiment and see. Like, I mean, when you're just looking at it like that, I think the fabric looks good, but when I put it on, it's getting kind of stretched out. So I'm thinking I might like knitting it on a two and maybe knocking off four stitches or so of my normal stitch count because it probably will, being a little bit thicker yarn, it probably will give me a wider sock um, even though I'm gonna use the same size needle that I always use. So that's that's my plan. I plan to knit, um, finish this pair and knit a whole nother pair with the yarn because I'll have plenty left over. Um, the sock that I just finished, the Suburban Stitcher sock, um, the blue one, I only used 20 grams of the main color. Like 20, like 17, like not even 20 which is so funny. It's like I didn't use hardly any of the yarn, so I have plenty left to make more things. Um, so, as far as the uh, sock goes, we're gonna be talking about uh, the cuff today and doing this twisted rib and most talking about the bind off because that's the biggest challenge, I think, of toe-up socks is finding a bind off that you like, something that is stretchy enough that it fits over your ankle in your heel, that's the hardest part. You might make a beautiful sock, you bind it off, it looks really good, and you can't put it on because it won't fit over your heel because it doesn't stretch. This has happened to me before. And it's not a good feeling, especially when you're a newer knitter, um, because you don't like, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to take it out, and it's very frustrating. So I wanna show you my favorite way to do the stretchy bind off that works for any kind of ribbing, it's so great. 
Um, so basically we're gonna do that today, hang out and chat for a little bit, and then that will be our tutorial. So if you have any questions while we're going through, please let me know if you have any other sock questions. I am here to help. All right, let's see. Um, I like knitting the shadow wrap heel, but it's a bit too small. Any tips on making a short row heel bigger? So since I'm not familiar with the shadow wrap heel yet, I'm not really sure about that one specifically. Um, but for most short row heels, if you do more short rows, that's going to make them bigger overall. It'll make them deeper, um, which might be what you need. If you need it to be bigger, you might need to um, increase some stitches before you start. So like either on the first row of the heel when you start working on half your stitches or on the last round, you could increase maybe two, four, or six stitches. Work your heel, and then before you join back in the round for your leg, do the same thing, but the opposite. Decrease two, four, or six stitches, whatever you choose. And that will give you more stitches to work with so you can have a deeper, wider heel. Maybe give that a try. Um, I feel like that would apply to any short row heel. So I think that that would work. Hey from Wyoming, hello. Um, I have the name of my shawl on my webpage under the picture and in the about me section. Oh good, I'm so glad you know that or saw that. <laughs> um, let's see. Do, do, do. What is my stitch gauge in these? That's a really good question, Madison. Um, let's see. Yeah, I only have 48 stitches. Um, I'm measuring it, I'm not even including you. Okay, so normally my stitch gauge is something like eight to eight and a half. So on a two, oh, it'll be easier if I put it down. One, two, three, four, five, okay, so my gauge, I know you can't really see that, sorry. My gauge trick for you is to never just measure one inch, measure two inches. So I put my, the end of my ruler here, like, or tape measure here right at the edge of a stitch. And then I counted how many stitches were in two inches, which was 14, divide by two, that's seven stitches per inch, okay? So that sounds about right, seven stitches per inch. Um, because I am amazing at math, I'm gonna use my calculator. Seven times 48, wait, that's not right. What am I trying to do? 40, wait, what am I trying to do right now? I'm trying to figure out the circumference. Seven stitches per inch, 48 divided by seven? Yeah, okay. My gosh. <laughs> what is math? Okay, I did 48 divided by seven. I have 48 stitches divided by seven stitches per inch means these socks are 6.85, seven, blah, 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 um, inches around. And for me, I like a, a seven inch circumference. So that's why these are probably not working out great because they're a little too small for me. So yeah, I, I didn't make the perfect sock here, but I mean, it looks like really good. I didn't make the perfect fit sock here, I guess you could say, um, but they do fit. I've tried them on and they're, they're wonderful. So I'm so excited. And I can't wait to use this yarn again for another pair of socks too, because it's just beautiful. So pretty. Um, let's see. You're glad, glad you remember to tune, at, tune in at the start. <laughs> the socks look so cute, thank you. My feet are so small, US size six, so I can always get two pairs out of a 100 gram skein. That's a good problem to have. <laughs> That's actually great. Hey from Canada, hey Teresa. You found it. This video is called Improving Heel Fit with Heel Increases by Roxanne Richardson. Thank you, Olivia. Hi, watching from the side of the road in Arizona, crazy summer, thun summer thunderstorms. I pulled over and I'm waiting it out. Okay, good. Yeah, be safe. Might as well watch a knit. <laughs> That's a good idea. Be safe, be safe. Um, I'm working on a test knit that has color work and lace details. Finally on halfway through the second. Since I'm making it for my older daughter, she has a large foot and it's a bear. Ooh, color work and lace. Oh my goodness. Your daughter's lucky. 
I'm knitting my first toe up sock and I'm terrified of the bind off. I'm glad you'll be showing this technique. Yes, this is such a great technique and it's not difficult. Um, so that's like the best thing about it is it's not hard to do. Um, so I think you're really gonna like it. April says, I'm wanting to learn crochet. Oh, you should, you should. I've got some videos on beginning crochet just on the beginning stitches. So if you wanna start there, but there's so many great resources on YouTube. Are you going to use the same pattern for the next socks with Moon Glow Yarn Company? No, I'm gonna do something different. Um, so my other idea for these was to use the different colors in different parts of the heel, toe, and cuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two socks that are gray. I mean, look how much yarn I have left. <laughs> I have so much yarn left. Um, I already put my scale away or I would weigh it, but it's a lot. So I'm gonna use the gray as my main and then let's just say, well, maybe, maybe we can plan it together. But thinking like I could use pink for the cuff, this darker pink, which I know looks red on the screen, but darker pink for the heel, and then like this color for the toe. And then on the other sock, I would use the other three colors like heel, cuff, toe. And that way, because I won't have a ton left, I'll only have like four or so grams of each color, but that should be plenty to work either the cuff, toe, or heel. So I'm excited to do that. I think it's gonna be fun. They're gonna be mismatched, but like intentionally, so I can handle it with my personality. But I think that would be fun. So maybe later I can get those little balls of yarn out and we can put together, like I don't know if I wanna do the same, like make this one sock and this one sock, because I think that they would look too different. So I think we're gonna have to mix them up, like maybe even do, green teal oh hold on i thought i heard my husband oh never mind he just left <laughs> bye kent um so maybe do like green teal and blue and then like the pinks and the purple or maybe i, I feel like i might need to split these two up because i feel like they need to be like i don't know anyway let's look at that together because you all are great at, pl at planning these colors i really like how they came out so um, doo -doo -doo. oh, I love it. Y'all are talking to each other. That's great. You don't know what size needles to use for crochet. For crochet, I would go get a worsted weight yarn, a size four yarn, and an H hook. They're kind of in the middle. I think that's a good place to start. I always taught my students on worsted weight size four yarn with an H hook. That's how we learned to crochet. I just finished knitting a pair of socks on nine inch circular needles. They were for my son who wears a size 13 shoe. It took forever to knit the foot. I bet it did, oh my goodness. I bet it did. Um, I bound off with your method and it turned out too stretched. I think I'm going to pass an elastic thread through for the last round. Okay, that's great. And if it's too stretchy, then don't do it. Do a different bind off, that's totally fine. I tried Judy's Magic Cast On but couldn't do it right and finally found the Turkish Cast On and that worked for me. Wonderful. Oh, whoa, whoa, I skipped again. Um, I love all this chatting, sorry. I'm trying to find where I was. Oh, it's starting to thunder at your house. Yes, be careful. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Love this. It's so great y'all are helping out each other. <laughs> oh hey Chantal just got or from Montreal just got back from your second shot oh wow yes fingers crossed I feel okay enough to knit for the rest of the day yeah you know what I think I got my second shot around four o'clock in the afternoon which is what time it is here and I I did not feel good um for about 24 hours but it didn't start till late <laughs> And I just laid in bed for like 24 hours. So I hope you don't get it too bad. Finish your second sock week sock this morning. Woohoo! Um, cast on 72 stitches, use a heel flop and gusset. And you didn't think you'd ever finish your socks. That's so funny. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, your My mom just walked into my room. She froze, asked who that was. <laughs> so I said, Nitty Natty. She said, you sounded very much like someone she watched on YouTube who was clean a cleaning channel <laughs> no way turns out we've been watching the same person for a long time and we didn't know we even talked about you without knowing we were talking about your videos I just thought that was a fun story Melissa that is such a fun story 
how cool that you and your mom both are watching like like watching my two channels and didn't know and then you're you both have the separate interests that's so cool i love that i'm definitely gonna have to share that story that's so cool oh good you're giving me color suggestions already i love it I think that pattern was a great choice for the sock set. The different accent colors will look good too. Will I do vanilla? Yes, I think I'll just do vanilla socks. Oh good, Jen felt fine after a second shot. Perfect. Okay, let's do some knitting. I'm not quite ready for the bind off yet. I think I have, so I wanna do 15 rounds. Normally I do 20, but using this larger needle, my rows are moving faster. So I am, this is my, uh, the front side of my sock for this sock is my beginning of round. Usually I have my beginning around on the back, um, but the reason that I put it on the front of this sock is so that I could knit over my ends throughout the whole sock um, so that I didn't have as many to weave in. So I only knit over like here where I changed from like gray to this teal color, I was able to knit over the teal as I added it in or maybe I knit over the gray. Now I can't remember, but I knit over one end and the other one I'm gonna weave in normally. I tried knitting over both and it like, I did that down here and it really pulled my stitches so I didn't like it. Um, so I knit over basically like every other end. So I have half the number of ends to weave in, which is good with this many ends on a sock. Um, anyway, so I am doing a twisted rib where I knit one through the back loop and then purl one. And I am doing this on a second sock too. You have convinced me. So many people said they loved this ribbing. And this was part of this pattern anyway. This is the color palette socks. Um, again, if you're just joining in, the color palette socks and I've modified them and I need to go back and update all of my notes on Ravelry for it. So I think I'm gonna do 15 rounds. So the way I like to count um, my ribbing rounds is I count the pearls because I think they're so easy to see. So let's just start right here I'm gonna count my pearls so if you're counting pause because I'm about to count out loud one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so I've got thirteen and I want to have fifteen rounds so I need to do two more so working the cuff of a sock like once for toe up socks once you've done the heel it's like such smooth sailing it's super easy you're just knitting a tube carrying on doesn't take much concentration so to do this twisted rib you know what I'm gonna take off my stitch marker because it's noisy I have a tiny fan going can you can y'all hear it I learned that I like with it being so hot today I felt like kind of faint <laughs> earlier after I did the live I was like "Ooh, I'm getting like woozy it's hot in here so I decided I would turn on my little fan because the air conditioning is um, right behind me and it's quite loud. So I thought I'd turn this fan on and it is making a difference. So I really like it. All right, so to knit this twisted rib, so easy, you just knit your knit stitches through the back loop. It does take for me a little bit longer, but it's worth the result. So instead of coming into the stitch from the right hand side, you're gonna come into the stitch from the left-hand side, the knit stitch, and put your needle in the back, your right-hand needle. And then you wrap around and you pull through that stitch. And what that does is it twists your stitches. It gives them an extra twist that we don't normally have. And then purl one, just purl normal. Don't purl twisted, it's too much work. So then I'm gonna do another twisted knit stitch or knit through the back loop is what we're doing. So I'm approaching from the right side, letting my right needle go to the back, wrap around, pull through, and it's twisted. I haven't tried this continental style, so let's give it a whirl. I'm not a continental knitter, except for color work, so it's definitely a challenge for me, but let's try. <laughs> so go into the back, wrap around, and pull through. Yeah, I did it. And purl. Oh yeah. Not not quite a quant continental knitter. Continental knitter. <laughs> not quite a continental knitter. But we can try. Wrap it. 
yeah. So there you go, knit one through the back loop, purl one, and that's it. Knit one through the back loop, purl one. And that's how you make twisted rib. Pretty easy. You hear honking, yay, <laughs> yay. <laughs> I know, they're, it's funny because they're very far down on the streets, but Okay, you can't hear the fan and you're even wearing headphones, which usually means you hear background noise more, so that's really good to know. I have it on the quiet setting. It's the same fan I took with me to um, Worldwide Knit in Public Day. <laughs> Little pocket fan, it's great. I've got it on my Amazon store. Um, but yeah, I haven't been out, I haven't really like done that much, so I haven't been outside a lot. And I was like, I'm sitting here sweating. I'm like, oh, my little fan, I'll get that out. And it's been wonderful. <laughs> so wonderful. Okay, let me see what I missed. Um, Bonnie said I'd break up the blue and purple with the light pink. Okay, that's a good idea. We'll get back to it. Yeah. Okay, can a fish lips kiss heel be done with both styles, a toe up and a cuff down sock? It can, and that's what's so great about it. This goes for a lot of, like, other short row heels too, but because the fish lips kiss heel is the only one that I do regularly, and by regularly I mean like I've knit this heel about 60 times. <laughs> the reason I know that, well let me see, is, is that quite right? Um, I was looking today, so my, nope, that's not gonna help me out. Okay, so when you repeat a, pattern on Ravelry it just in the um, URL it'll say like what the pattern name is so like ravelryprojects.com slash my username um, fish lips kiss heel and then it'll say like dash two if you're making it a second time so mine says dash 35 <laughs> so I have knit this heel a bunch of times and each project I've made two socks so there you go I guess I've made this about 70 times so I'm a fan, I'm a fan, which is why it's hard for me to think about trying something else because I'm like, what if I like it more? <laughs> what if I like it more than my fish lips kiss heel? I guess that would be okay. It's okay to learn and grow and do new things. So here's the fish lips kiss heel on a toe up sock, the one we're working on right now. It's like a little, little wedge, little square guy there. It'll look nice when I block it. It'll kind of come out. And then here's the fish lips kiss heel on a cuff down sock. You might notice that these socks kind of have a different look because of the difference in gauges. So don't let that like skew what you're looking at too. Um, so it's exactly the same. It's so lovely. Amazing, amazing. That's not a hole actually. It looks like a hole on camera. It's, it's a dark blip of yarn. <laughs> but yeah, fish lips kiss heel, you can do it in you know the solid, the, the main color, or you can do like I did here, a contrast color. It's such a great heel, such a great heel. I love it. Okay. So worth getting even if you don't feel well the day after, totally. Um, okay, good. I love that you can hear the honking. Like hopefully it's not like distracting. I mean, I barely like notice it anymore. I do notice it, but it's not like um, troubling or bothersome or distracting. It's just kind of like there, <laughs> kind of just there. Um, on my most recent pair of socks, I did a two by two twisted rib and I loved it. So now I don't really do one by one anymore. Ooh, nice. I experimented with a twisted heel flap on my previous socks to match my cuff. It looked great, but definitely snug on my foot. Yeah, that's cool though. It's fun to experiment and see. Hello from Norway. Hope you all are doing fine. Oh, thank you, Renee. Um, twisted rib stitch is a little faster than regular rib. Oh, is it? It's the opposite for me. I don't know why. It's a little slower for me. Great job doing continental. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're so nice. Um, I did a test knit sweater that had about a foot 
of twisted rib over almost 200 stitches. The rib on a sock sounds like much less work. Well, that's because it is. <laughs> much less, much less. Um, I bought the pattern and need to read through this to figure this heel out. So if you are making the fish lips kiss heel for the first time, this is my suggestion for you. You, you do not have to do this, but this is my suggestion. Don't read through the first part. <laughs> Skip to page nine, that's where the pattern instructions are. Make your sock from the cuff down, make the heel on page nine and 10, because that's where the pattern instructions are. And then as you knit the foot, try on your sock to help you measure it. Or at that point, you can go back to the instructions in the beginning, which are all about sizing and placement of the heel. If you've knit your cuff, the heel is already in the right place. If you knit the leg, I'm sorry, knit cuff and leg, then your heel heel's already in the place where it needs to be. There's no worrying about is this in the right place. So I like doing that, like for my first heel, doing it cuffed down because then there's less guesswork. I can try the sock on and make sure that it's fitting and I make the foot long enough. So that's my suggestion for everyone who's knitting the fish lips kiss heel for the first time is don't don't wait to start it because you want to re want to read through the beginning. Just skip it. <laughs> Just skip it and go to the pattern part. But again, you don't have to do that. Up to you. But it's okay if you do. Um, have you ever tried the sweet tomato heel? I haven't, but I've heard it and heard of it, and I really like the name. <laughs> I think that's so cute. Um, I want to try Continental because it always looks faster, but I just can't get the hang of it. I've crocheted for 45 years, so you would think I would be more comfortable with the yarn in my left hand. You would think that. I'm actually really surprised that you don't knit Continental. So which one did you learn first? Because a lot of times if people crochet first, then they almost, and I mean for me, from what I've seen almost always, will knit Continental because they already know how to tension the yarn. So that's very interesting. The honking is not bad. I have mis misophonia. Oh, I don't know what that is. What is that? Should I know what that is? Am I being silly? <laughs> you made it from Texas. Why did you choose to do sock week on shark week? I have always wondered what gave you the idea. So I just really like puns. I just really think play, like a play on words for me is just so much fun. And so the idea came from me wanting just to do a sock make along. And I must have thought about it in the winter time. It was like I had plenty of time to plan in advance um, that year. And so I was just like, Shark Week, Sock Week, oh, how fun would it be to do a challenge? And so then I started researching so uh, Shark Week to see how long it was and to like make a challenge that was appropriate for that. So, you know, it started out the first year as just make a single sock. And then last year it was like, if you can make more than one sock, you know, then you can get more points. This year it's more in the same, like, you know, the more socks you make, the more points you get. And it seems like people are getting faster or like, figuring out ways to get knitting into their day. Um, it's just been really cool. And it's, I think, always a good thing because we have a lot of people knit their first sock during sock week, which is incredible to me, um, or try a new technique or meet a new goal or just like seeing how fast you can make something is really encouraging sometimes. It's just kind of cool to see that you can do it. Um, I'll take your suggestion starting on page nine. Woo, I almost read the first page. <laughs> yeah, you can always go back and do it. It's not that the, it's not useful information. It's really good information. It's just not necessary to actually knit the heel. Um, the only thing you do need to know is if you're making a cuff down sock that has a pattern in it, um, there's a note on page nine that you, or maybe it might be before it. But if you have a patterned leg, you need to stop the patterning on the back of the leg one inch before the top of the heel. So just if you do are doing patterned, go look at that. But if you're doing stockinette, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm the same way with Continental. I practice sometimes, but I'm not very good or fast. Yeah, I just realized like as a, as a whole, Continental knitting is faster. But if it's not faster for me because it's not what I'm comfortable with, then it's not faster. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not faster. I mean, I know I could learn it, but there's probably a point where you've learned, you've knit one way for so long. It's like, what what's it going to take to change this for me if I could no longer knit English style? If something happened, if I was really injured or something, and I needed to knit Continental, that's when I would finally buck up and learn <laughs> how to do it. Um, is there a way to create more room with a heel that's not a heel flop and gusset? I love the look of your heels, but I'm afraid my sock won't fit. Yeah, there's some tips in the Fish Lopes Kiss heel pattern. Um, and then we were just talking about the shadow wrap heel. I think already the shadow wrap heel has a little more room, um, but you can do some increases before you start your heel. And that will give you, with more stitches, you have more short rows. So when you increase the stitches, you get more width in the heel and more depth because you're gonna have more short rows going. So that's one way, you just, just a couple of stitches, two, four, six maybe, and that will help. It's all about trial and error. It feels like I'm cheating when I do the fish lips kiss heel so easy. <laughs> Um, you crocheted for 45 years and you knit for two years. Yeah, so that's super interesting that you prefer English style, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I learned to crochet first and so I knit Continental. Yep. <laughs> I learned how to crochet first and I cannot knit Continental. I have to knit English. Stephanie, that's so interesting. We've got two people like that. I knit Continental, but I hold the yarn around my middle finger. I just can't get any tension holding the yarn over my index finger. So interesting. Um, thanks so much for that advice about the fish lips kiss heel because I panicked and I haven't tried it now I will yeah give it a try the worst thing that can happen is you can try it on after you make it and it doesn't fit and you can just take it out <laughs> like that's that that's literally the worst thing that can happen um, I learned how to crochet first but I never knew how to tension the yarn until after I learned to knit and I knit English okay Nancy um, how do I post my sock on Ravelry? So there is a group called the Love and Stitches group. So make sure you're a part of that. And then in the Love and Stitches group, there's a thread called Finished Socks. I think it's like Sock Week 2021 Finished Socks. In there is where you can post your finished sock. So each sock you finish needs its own post. Um, and in order to post pictures on Ravelry, it's not very like, it's not super user friendly, I will admit. You need to have a project page first, like in your project notebook. So make a project page, upload your photo there. You can do it from your phone. And then when you go to the Love and Stitches group to post it, you can just click on, there's like an icon. It kind of looks like a photograph and you can choose use project photo. And then you're able to just choose that project and post the photo. So if you, let's say you make a pair of socks, maybe your first post for sock number one is the photo of your project from your project and then you can just create one more post and say like this is my second entry for these socks and then you have two entries so each sock gets you an entry um, I do have on my Instagram on my uh, highlights which is like the circles underneath my my profile um, I have a visual tutorial on how to post a photo onto the Ravelry group so head there and you'll actually see how it works so loud um oh yeah and olivia suggested this video improving heel fit with heel increases perfect um <laughs> i think i saw mechanically yeah mechanically continental is faster but individually what's going to be faster is whatever you're most comfortable doing absolutely i finished my second sock last night debating on casting on another i mean we do have two more full days and you finished two socks in five so that's a good that's a good chance so you can finish another pair or another sock kelly says do it <laughs> i love it cast it on sarah says cast it on okay here we go misphonia is a disorder characterized by the experience of strong negative emotions of anger and anxiety in response to certain everyday sounds such as people eating drinking and breathing Yes, I've heard people really don't like, like obviously nobody really wants to hear somebody like chewing, like it's gross, um, but it's not gonna ruin my day. But I know for some people it does <laughs> and they have to just leave. I certainly don't have 
that particular disorder, but I know I'm very sensitive to sound, sound, temperature, and environment. And so if things are too noisy, I just have to like turn off. Like if, um, let's say we're at a bar or restaurant and the music is very loud and people are trying to have a conversation, I'm just like, nope, (laughs) too much effort. If it's like the third time that somebody's like, what to me? I'm like, too loud, not gonna talk anymore. It's too much, I know it's gonna make me frustrated, so I'm just gonna sit here in peace. <laughs> I don't know if that's the same, like a similar thing, but that's that's how I feel about like noise. It's like, nope, can't do it. Um, oh, and I can't stand it, my husband likes to watch TikToks and I'll be trying to read and I'm like, I cannot, concentrate on my book when you're listening to TikToks. Can you go somewhere else? (laughs) I kick them out. I'm like, get out of here or turn them down. Um, Okay. I flick my yarn rather than doing the huge swing with my hand. So I pull up the yarn up close to needle tips. It works for me and I can do continental and I find this faster. That's great. Um, My mom tried to teach me English when I was younger. I didn't take. A friend kid came from Luxembourg came to visit and taught me combination. Now there's no looking back. So combination, does that mean you hold the yarn in one hand for knitting and one hand for purling, like you switch? I don't know what combination is. Um, I've never heard of this, but I might have mis- misophonia. Oh, I've been saying it wrong. Is it misophonia? Oops, sorry, misophonia. Uh, I just thought I was cranky. <laughs> there's there's so many things like that, like, um, stimulation disorders too like those are real things like certain types of clothing like if you can't if you can't stand like socks on the carpet like there's all kinds of things like that like you're not just strange or cranky like there's something to it and so then once you learn about it it's nice because you can uh, learn to avoid those things (laughs) so you don't have to feel uncomfortable um i love that i learned to crochet first and I knit Continental, but mostly because my mother and grandmother strongly advised me to learn Continental because they regret learning English style. Yay, they saved you. <laughs> They're like, here's what we know. This is how you knit faster. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, I just counted that, but I don't think I counted it right. So one second. Nine, eight, seven, eight, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Wait, 15? Oh my gosh, look, we need to count this together because I can't get it. I can't get it right. Sometimes I feel like my like when I'm trying to concentrate on the stitches, my eyes will like shift or flicker or something, and I'm like, where did I just leave off? Kind of helps to have a needle, doesn't it? Let's use this one. Let's use this. Okay. Here's a tip. Use your needle tip to count. Ready? I'm about to count, so if you're counting, stop. <laughs> Pause. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, one more round and then we can bind off, which is what you're here for. We gotta learn the bind off, the super stretchy bind off. I don't really know the name for this bind off. Um, I did not make it up. I learned it from somewhere and it just really clicked for me and really worked well for me. And so I started using it and then I lost, I lost the resource along the way. I have no idea where it came from, if it was a pattern, a video, if it had a name, nothing. I have no idea. Um, let's see, what did Sherry, what was Sherry's advice? Before I start my heel, I always put in a lifeline. So if I had to go back, I don't have to remove my needle and I hope I don't lose my stitches. It's a good idea. Um, (laughs) I'm excited to try toe up for the first time ever. Bought needles today. Yay. Hi from the UK. Loving knitting all the socks. Hello. After I bought the fish lips kiss heel pattern, I was so intimidated that I never tried it. I will take another look starting on page nine this time. (laughs) Yes. Give it a try. Just, it's so much better just to go straight to the pattern. I think. Um, but obviously she has that information in there for a reason. It's, it's good info. It's just, again, not necessary to actually create the heel. (laughs) I'm 15 and I've been crocheting for two years, but Natalie has inspired me to want to learn to knit. I definitely want to learn to knit socks in the future. Yay, Alyssa, you totally should. That's so exciting. 
it's good to know how to do both. It's like you're unstoppable. <laughs> you see a pattern you want to make, don't have to worry if it's knit or crochet, you can make it. <laughs> Um, let's see, I have sensory issues, so too much noise and weird texture gives me overload. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm ready for the bind off. I'm almost there, I'm almost there. Um, do you use a larger needle for this? I do not use a larger needle for this. I think that naturally I'm a pretty loose bind offer. So I do not go up a needle size or mine would be way too big, but if you try this out and you're still finding it quite tight or when you do a traditional bind off where you're just you know lifting the stitches up and over and that's tight and you go up a needle size to correct that i would just do whatever you do for normal bind offs like if you go up a needle size for normal classic bind offs go up a needle size here if you don't then don't and you should be fine and after you do a few maybe five six stitches you can kind of We'll kind of test it and see and then that's how that's how you'll know if you need a bigger needle if it's like looking really tight you can tink those back and then um, start over with a larger needle but no I just do the same size needle um, you and K have inspired me to start a knitting podcast but I'm not a tech expert what advice would you give should I go lay down in the corner until this feeling passes <laughs> I will never say don't start something if you're getting that feeling. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, is your, can you tell me, is your name Bridget or is it Brigitte or none of the above? Will you let me know? Um, but I would say to start a podcast, if you have a nice smartphone, like a newer smartphone, iPhone 10, 11, 12, whatever it is right now whatever the newest one is. Um, I started off all my podcasts on my iPhone 10, I think. And um, there is a setting in your phone. Basically, I didn't get a camera until this year. All of my podcasts, all of my vlogs, all of my cleaning videos until like I moved to New York or on my phone. And I also edited them on my phone, which is hard to learn. Actually, editing in general is hard to learn. There's a big learning curve. It's gonna take you a lot longer at first, but know that it will get faster. So I did, I literally did everything on my phone. Um, let me see if I can find this setting without showing you too much on my actual phone. Um, this is such a game changer. Honestly, even if you don't film stuff to put on YouTube, you need to change the setting in your iPhone today because this is huge. Okay. So in your iPhone settings, you can't see that, sorry. Aha! Um, in your iPhone settings, wow, that's nice. Nice and clear, Natalie. Maybe it's just weird because it's a screen. Anyway, scroll down to the camera, go to camera, and then go to this right here where it says record video. By default, your phone will be at this right here unless you've changed it. It'll be at 1080 at 30 FPS, um, which is frames per second. You wanna switch it to 1080 at 60 frames per second. I mean, you can even film in 4K, but I film way too many videos to hold 4K on my phone. Um, so it even tells you like down here, like what those things mean. Like um, basically 1080 is a smoother, like. Uh, 1080 at 60 is smoother than 1080 at 30. You'll notice a big difference. And then like 4K is like film style, which is not something I need. So anyway, I would change your settings right now to that. That's gonna make a huge difference. And then just go for it. You don't really need much else. You need a tripod. I would say just go for it. But my biggest advice is like record yourself and then watch yourself for a while because you will learn all types of things by watching yourself. Like you need to know if your videos are enjoyable to watch. And so by watching yourself, you will learn, you will get more comfortable. Yes, it will be awkward, but I promise it will make things improve so much more. I think the very first thing I did, I did an IGTV video, like a 10 minute podcast video, 
and I don't even know if I posted it. I think I just practiced. I just recorded it like I was going to post it. And then I watched it back and I learned from it. I'm like, okay, I need to learn to look at the camera. I need to do this. I, there's, there's, you know how everyone has a phone voice? Like when you answer the phone for somebody that you don't know, or you answer the phone at work, like you have a performance voice on, like you may not realize it, but you do. Same thing when you're on camera. Like, I'm not just going to sit here like I talk to my husband at the end of the night, right? It's different. It's not fake or anything. It's just like a different mode. And so it's good to practice that and that will help a lot. All right. Uh, what did I miss? I don't even know the different styles. I learned sitting in my grandma's lap, so I did whatever she did. Yeah, that's a lot. A lot of us just learn whoever Whatever anyone told it, taught us, that's what we learned. Um, misophonia, got it. Misophonia. Um, you have a sensory processing disorder. Yeah, I feel like it's like, um, maybe not common, but it's like not unusual, you know? And I think that um, we need to be very kind to ourselves about stuff like that and very um, sensitive of others. Okay, I know this is a beginner, Wait, beginner friendly tutorials, but what is your favorite lace sock pattern? Um, great if I can find it on Ravelry. I do not knit pattern socks very much. I know, I'm not gonna be very helpful here. Maybe we have some people that can tell us though. I just don't really knit pattern socks. Like this for me is like a big <laughs> deal that I'm knitting a pattern sock. Usually I'm just, usually I'm just a vanilla sock girl. Um, I don't think I'm going to get my sock done in time. I will continue it though. Yeah, and post on Instagram because on Instagram, I'm gonna choose a couple of winners from the hashtag. And so it doesn't have to be a finished sock because it could be from a whip post. Um, I don't like loud chewing sounds by my ear. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, oh yes, if you don't have knitting friends nearby, it's so nice to have a community online for sure. I bought the V-neck t-shirt, can't wait to receive it. Oh, yay, I'm wearing the V-neck t-shirt. It's so cute and so soft. Um, have you done socks with color work? I have. Um, again, I'm just not really into patterned socks, at least right now. It's like socks are just take out on the go, simple knitting for me. And so it's not that I don't like them or think that they're beautiful. It's just not something that fits into my like knitting taste or style right now, I guess is what you call it, like my knitting sections, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it doesn't really fit in for me right now, but I think they're beautiful. Um, do you feel like your accent is changing now that you live in New York City? There's probably some words that are like common here that I might pick up an accent on. I'm pretty susceptible to picking up accents, but then I also can really go back into like my Southern, like both my parents have I've noticed now being out of the house for 10 years, like that they have pretty Southern, like Georgia accents. Um, and so if I go home, like that's easy to fall back into. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Do, do you think that the way that I talked have, has changed? <laughs> you might have to tell me, we might have to go back and like compare videos or something. We're here to chat, take longer on the cuff. I know, I just, I can't believe it's been an hour and I'm like, what have I shown them? <laughs> a twisted knit. <laughs> but I'm so happy that you're happy here and like coming to chat another time today. Like that's so cool to me. Yeah, I mean, this is absolutely amazing. Okay, um, same here with the fish lips pattern. We'll go straight to page nine now. Yes, yes. and if. I'm pretty sure that's where the pattern is. It's whatever the first page of the pattern is. I'm pretty sure it's nine. Um, it's French, so you are correct, Brigitte. Okay, awesome. You have an Android smartphone. I bet you have a setting like that um, that's something about your camera and look for that 1080 is HD and the frame rate, you just want the highest frame rate. So 60 is, usually it's 30 and 60. So you probably do have that setting somewhere in your camera settings, so take a look. Um, Toaster in the background sleeping is adorable. Yes, he's my buddy. He's the best. Um, I use Addy 
Easy Shorty Circulars. Oh, I've never heard of that, which are 10 inch. Oh yes, yes, the 10 inch. I didn't know they were called Easy Shorty Circulars. That's kind of cute. A little more comfortable than nine inch. I have heard that from several people that they like the 10 inch versus the nine. That's great. Now on those, is it one needle is longer than the other? Is that how they work? I can't remember. Um, finally caught at least a section on live. Yay, hard with the tiny human running around, but I'm so thankful you hang out with us. Oh, I'm so glad you took the time to come on here with your busy life. I know it's hard. Um, on the Android, those settings should be the same. Yeah, yeah, I'm hoping they are. Who are your favorite knitting podcasters? Oh my gosh, I've totally gotten out of the habit of watching knitting podcasts. I actually really have gotten out of the habit of watching much YouTube lately. I think I've just been doing so many new things with my business that I'm just like into TV right now, into TV shows. I don't know. I kind of go in phases, um, but I watch, I watch the Stranded podcast, who's Amy Florence. She's in I, Scotland. I think she's in Scotland now. She was in the UK, or she, um, she is in the UK. She was in England. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to everyone that I just offended by saying that. <laughs> I promise I know better. Um, I watched her every Thursday at my lunchtime, like consistently until COVID. And then after that, I got like totally out of my routine. I used to watch her. Um, I still like watching like Kay. I, I used to like watching Suburban Stitcher, but she doesn't post any, really post anymore. Um, who else did I watch? I don't know. I think that I want to start getting back into knit watching knitting podcasts and I'm probably going to start trying to like watch some new people. Maybe I can like start collaborating with them again. I think that would be really fun. I like doing those collaborations and bringing new people to uh, maybe in, in front of my audience and saying, hey, have you seen these people? They're fun to watch. So I think I might have to start doing that. Um, what is your cleaning YouTube channel called? It is called This and Nat. I just realized I'm just sitting here talking and I'm not even on the full screen. It is called This and Nat. Um, let me see if I can put it on here. Because it's, it's another play on my name. Like I said, I love puns. This and Nat. Yes. And it is a cleaning channel and organization and lifestyle and it's, it's so much fun. I love working on it. Um, great tips for starting a podcast. Oh, good. I'm surprised to see you knitting that way. So many people knit the other way. I knit the exact same way. So lovely. <laughs> yes. Thanks for doing that. Can you go fast? I, I don't think I knit super fast. Like I don't think I'm a slow knitter. I think I'm somewhere into like the high average range because I knit a lot. You know what I mean? Like I have knit for years. I knit a lot every week. And so just because of that, I'm probably on the average to faster range, but I'm not, I would not say that I'm a fast knitter. I knit a lot. That's how I get so much knitting done is because I find a lot of opportunities to knit more than actually being like speedy with the stitches. Um, but yeah, I knit, I knit English style, not continental. So I know I have some English knitters here. Um, all right. I really like the Mercury Socks on Ravelry by Kim Drotar. Is, are those lace socks? I know we were asking for some lace suggestions. I like knitting vanilla socks. I don't think I have, I don't have to think as much. Just knit, yes, yes. And then one is longer on the Addy needles. Very cool. Okay, let's bind off, shall we? Let's do the bind off. Okay, so this is what I like to call the super stretchy bind off. Um, I don't actually think it has a title. I don't really know, but it is quite easy to do. You can do this for any type of ribbing. It works really well on the cuff of socks because you need a stretchy bind off to fit over your heel. If you do a regular classic knit one, knit two, lift the stitch over, and knit another one, lift the stitch over, I can almost guarantee you're not gonna be able to get it on. And if you do, it's gonna like strangle your calf. So, you know, you might be able to swing it, but this works, I think, much better. Um, so for me, I tried the Jenny's, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off 
And that actually was too stretchy for me. I know somebody said earlier they, they tried my method and it was too stretchy for them. And that's fine. If this doesn't work for you, don't use it. Find something else. Um, that's what I had to do when Judy's, you know, everyone loves it. Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. I'm like, oh great, it's gonna be amazing. And it was too stretchy for me. <laughs> my sock like flared and I didn't like that. So this does better for me. It might do better for you. And if it doesn't, don't worry, just find another one. It's totally fine. Okay, so the way that this uh, goes is you are going to work two stitches in pattern and then knit two together through the back loop. That's all. So whatever your pattern is, if it's knit two, purl two, knit one, purl one, whatever it is, you're gonna work those stitches in pattern. My pattern is knit one through the back loop, purl one. And so I'm gonna work two stitches in pattern. Knit one through the back loop and purl one. Again, if, if my stitch pattern was a knit two, purl two, I would be knitting two here. Whatever your pattern is, you work two stitches in the pattern you already established. After you've worked two stitches, you are gonna move your yarn to the back. It may already be there, like if your second stitch was a knit, it's already in the back. If it wasn't, move your yarn in the back. Then you're gonna knit these two stitches on the right needle together through the back loop. The way that you do that is put your left needle into the fronts of both of those stitches. So left needle goes into stitch one and then into stitch two. I kind of have to wiggle them. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, now I'm set up to knit two together through the back loop. Just bring my yarn around, knit two together through the back loop. And I have successfully bound off one stitch. So we started out by working two, now we just need to work one stitch, knit two together through the back loop, okay? So my, stop honking. My next stitch is a knit two together through the back loop. I work it in pattern. If it was a purl, I would purl it. If it was a regular knit, I would regular knit it. But it's a knit two together through the back loop. So that's what I did. And then I've got two stitches here, my yarns in the back. I will knit two together through the back loop. So, sorry, I've only done that once, so let me show it a little slower. Left needle goes into the front of both of these stitches, goes to the front, and then wrap around, knit two together through the back loop. Okay? Next stitch is a purl. So I'm gonna bring my yarn forward, I'm gonna purl it, work one more stitch in pattern, Always put your yarn back before you do the knit two together through the back loop. Always yarn back. Put the yarn in the back. Then slide that left needle in and knit two together through the back loop. Next stitch is a twisted knit, so I knit it. And I guess, can you kind of see, I kind of like pull my stitches up so that they're even. And I don't strangle my yarn or pull it tight, but I'm not being especially loose or anything. So yeah, pattern is just work one stitch, move the yarn to the back if it's not there already, and then knit two together through the back loop. So, so basically, all of our stitches are getting, they slipped out, so I gotta do that again. <laughs> basically, all of our stitches are getting bound off knit-wise, which creates a really nice edge because we're always knitting two together through the back loop. But right before that, they're getting worked in pattern. So it's not like we have this really obvious knit row right above. And I don't know, it just works really well. Because I've done it before, like where you bind off in pattern and you, you don't move the yarn to the back. And I don't know, for some reason, it just doesn't look the same. So I'm just working a new stitch, then knitting two together through the back loop working a new stitch, knitting two together through the back loop, always making sure, so here we go, I'm gonna purl, I'm gonna make sure my yarn is always in the back before I actually bind off a stitch, work them together, okay? Does that make sense, any questions on that? It's really easy. I do wanna show you one more thing once I get all the way bound off, but I might bring it over to me, just cause it's a little more uh, comfortable for me to knit. Okay, let's see. Um, hi from Ontario, Ontario, Canada. I love knitting socks. I'm watching YouTube at the same time, for sure. Hey, Megan. Yes, 
watch the replay. I mean, this is the main tutorial component, so you're, you're getting that, so that's good. Um, Mercury socks, that's your favorite lace pattern, good. Maybe you can do a collaboration with the crazy sock lady. She's always hosting the summer sock camp from June until the end of August. Yes, for sure. And if you're participating in both, you can double dip. So your socks for sock week totally count for summer sock camp. Um, this is my first time knitting a shorty. Hope that today I can start knitting the toe. Yes, good luck, good luck. Okay, I don't see any questions on this, so I'm hoping that that made sense. Um, but yeah, if, if you were worried about knitting the, oh, this is what I was gonna show. When you're done, well, or not when you're done, once you've done a few stitches, go ahead and take a look at them. So you can see my stitches look, they look really pretty even. The bind off looks nice. You can stretch them and see how stretchy they are, okay? This is nice and stretchy. This is gonna get over my leg, okay? No problem. I'm kind of curious, like I haven't done this before with twisted ribs, so I was I was very curious if it would be too tight to keep the, the knit stitches twisted, but I thought if I didn't knit them twisted that they would look sloppy. So I'm trying it and it looks to be fine, but I wanna get all the way to the end with all of you. So let me get these things bound off and then I will show you my last little trick. You know how when you're knitting anything in the round, you get a, uh, when you bind off, it's like a stair step almost, like <laughs> the stitches do not look even, right? From the beginning and end of the round. I have a little tip for you to get them even again. I mean, they're not supposed to be even. Knitting is a spiral, so it's completely normal, but I have a little tip to even them up. You can definitely use your end, but this one helps a ton, so I'm gonna show you that. Um, let's see. Hi from Delaware, this is a great tutorial. Thank you, of course. Did you go over the heel at all? I did not go over the heel, so I, um, this week I taught the Fish Lips Kiss heel as a class, as a paid for class. And so because those participants paid for the class, um, those videos only went to them. They came to a live class and then they got those videos. So those will not be going on YouTube. Um, plus it's a paid for pattern, so I cannot give away that information for free. That would be wrong. But I do have, um, I do have a heel tutorial video for the Afterthought heel, um, which I'm gonna be doing on my self-striping socks. So that's already on YouTube. It's part of my uh, sock series. So, but I do plan to have more classes coming up. So just stay tuned. We've got exciting things coming. Let's see. I was just going to ask what you do at the end. Yeah, I'm gonna show you. I'm, I'm halfway through my bind off right now. So I will get there. We can keep chatting until then. Yay, more chatting time. <laughs> um, for a first time sock knitter, would you recommend toe up or cuff down? I would recommend cuff down. So the toe of a toe up sock has a lot more like new techniques going on than the cuff. The cuff, you basically just bind off start knitting in the round and you get a lot of practice on tiny needles or magic loop, double pointed needles, whatever you're learning that is not gonna be, it's, there's not as much of a learning curve at the beginning of a cuff as there is at the beginning of a toe. So um, that's my suggestion is to do a cuff down sock if it's your very first time. Um, this isn't sock related, just popped into my head. I have a tote bag that I crocheted that has ho a horrible odor. I tried soaking it in Dawn uh, fabric softener and baby shampoo, but you can still smell it. Huh, what happened to it? Do you know? Any ideas on how to fix it? I don't, you might have to strip it. Have you heard of laundry stripping? I've never tried it before. You know what else is really good for odor that you can try first that's not gonna take, be as time consuming? There's two things that are really good for odor. Um, one is fresh air and sunshine. I know it doesn't sound like it would do much, but it actually works wonders. 
Um, so putting the bag out in the sun, letting the sun kind of bake it, um, get some fresh air, that really does help. Baking soda. Baking soda is so good for odors. So you can put some on the inside, the outside, maybe set it somewhere in like a plastic tub so that it doesn't get everywhere. That's really good for odors. Um, and after the baking soda, you can kind of like shake some of it off and then throw it in the wash with a little bit of the baking soda on. When I wash clothes, I actually put baking soda in the bottom and vinegar. Baking soda and vinegar are really good. Um, so you could try that. Um, but then yeah, if, that, if all else fails, there's this thing called laundry stripping. And it's the craziest thing. I haven't tried it yet, but I really need to. And there's different ways to do it, but I think, I just saw somebody doing it yesterday. You need like washing soda, different from baking soda, but Arm & Hammer does make it. You need powder tied and something called borax. And none of these ingredients can you get in small amounts. So it does become quite an expensive thing, but if you're gonna do it um, every so often, it's worth it. And then you put everything, you put all those ingredients like in the tub with water and you let it soak for hours, hours. And you're and just look up stripping, laundry stripping. Don't look up stripping. <laughs> look up laundry stripping and you will be just blown away by the photos of people's bathtub water. It'll be like murky, dark brown. It's really gross. Okay. Um, which pattern for a first time sock knitter? I've heard really good things about Kay's sock patterns, the crazy sock lady. It sounds like she has some video tutorials in there that are super helpful. So I would say um, Kay's, any of Kay's patterns, vanilla socks on blank, vanilla socks on double pointed needles, vanilla socks on magic loop, whichever one you are, you have the needles for that you wanna start, I would try that. Um, Go Clean Co. just did an Insta on laundry stripping. That's exactly who I was watching yesterday. I love Go Clean Co. She's so much fun. What is your group on Ravelry called? It is called Love in Stitches. Let me see if I can get that linked for you. Oops. Love in Stitches. All right. Here's a link to the group. There you go. Oops, sorry. Um, you just finished your second sock, woohoo! Okay, Amanda asks, I want to make a float tote, but I'm not the best at crochet. Does it have a high level of difficulty? No, it's quite an easy pattern. Um, the most difficult thing, I think, is crocheting in the round. So you wanna make sure you're comfortable with crocheting in the round. But the stitches are quite simple. It's not difficult um, to follow. There's not a lot of difficult techniques. So you should be okay if you have some familiarity with crochet. Um, the yarn was gifted to you. Oh wait, is this yarn or a bag? For some reason I thought you said a bag. Uh, a tote bag. Oh, the yarn for the tote bag was gifted to you. Okay, I'm sorry, I was thinking of fabric. So yeah, be gentle. I would start with the like baking soda, sunshine, washing it. Just be careful if it's handmade because you don't wanna, you do not want to mess it up. But I guess if you can't do anything about it, you just have to get rid of it. Ooh. I don't know if I would strip that though, so be careful. Um, borax, like slime stuff. You know, Alyssa, I've never made slime, but probably, <laughs> it's probably the same thing. Simply Allie on YouTube has a great video about laundry stripping. Yeah, I wanna follow hers because I think she does it with more like natural ingredients. And um, I mean, not that like washing sh soda and stuff are not, but I think I already have the ingredients she uses. So that'd be nice to use what I already have first. And then if I, if, that doesn't work, I can try something else. I like Simply Alley too. Um, oh no, you missed most of it. It's okay, Deanna. Um, I'll have to watch the replay. Yeah, I'm about to show my last little technique here. I got a, one, more, one more thing for all of you. 
Um, Summer Lee has a great free pattern and some video tutorials on YouTube. Perfect. I might have to look um, into laundry stripping. It infected some yarn it had on it, so fingers crossed it works. Yeah, what in the world? What could have happened to it? It's so strange. Okay. Um, I tried to knit the vanilla pattern, but the outside of the sock was pearl and the inside was knit. It was so confusing. Like it was inside out. Her sock was inside out or your sock was inside out? I don't know, that's strange. Okay, I've just got a couple of stitches left to bind off and then I'm gonna show you how to um, kind of close things out here. So it's looking good and stretchy. Yeah, that should be big enough. Um, but what I like about it is it's not like super duper duper flared because that's how mine was with um, different, with the Ginny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And it's not for everyone. So like a lot of people love that one and it works great. And I was kind of like sad, it didn't work for me. I'm like, this works for everybody. Why isn't it working? But it was just too flared for me. All right, last stitch. Make sure you move my yarn back to knit two together through the back loop. Okay, before you cut your yarn, there's one more thing I wanna do, or that I like to do. So I'm looking here, my last stitch I just did was this purl stitch. My first stitch is this knit column, right? I'm gonna look for the stitch at the top of the knit column, my first bound off stitch. It's pretty small. It's not this nice loose one right here, of course. It's the one next to it that's tiny. But I'm gonna grab both legs of that stitch that's on the top, my first bound off stitch. Okay, it's right there. I can kind of pull it out. Sometimes I kind of pull it out and then I come back just because I don't wanna uh, split it, okay? So I looked for my very first stitch of the round and I looked for the first bound off stitch on top of it. I grabbed both strands. So what we're trying to do here is get rid of this like stair steppy look that's totally natural but um, we want to resolve it. And this for me does a, just a little better. This in combination with using my end to even things up does the best for me. So I got down to one stitch, I picked this up. Now I'm just gonna pretend like this is a knit stitch and I'm gonna knit it. Now I've got two stitches on my needle and then I'm just gonna classic bind off. Gonna lift this one up, over, off, okay? And then I'm going to cut my yarn and pull through. I like to pull through the stitch itself. So I'm just gonna pull this yarn through here. I just kind of use my needle to do it. All right. All right, <laughs> all right, who am I talking to? Who knows? All right, so then I'm just gonna pull and it's much more even. And then I usually still take my end and I will like go around this next stitch, like I'll go like around, through, around to really make things nice and even. And it's just a much smoother finish, so. Um, that was hard to see. It wasn't very clear. I need to do it again. Um, I tried, okay, wait. Attempting to sneak knitting at work. I've got nothing to do. <laughs> do it. Um, mine flares so much when casting off and toe up. Yours looks great. Do you do the same thing? It's just, I, that's the thing. It's like for me, the other bind off, the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. For me, flared so much, other people know. So it's like, it's just, it's okay. If it doesn't work, you know, use something else. Um, borax is really a regular item in our home for a kid who loves making slime. <laughs> I love that. Um, did you by any chance have the sock turned inside out? Ribbing looks the same on both sides, so it's easy to flip out at the beginning. Yeah, that's totally possible. Let me know if that was hard to see, if I need to show that again. Um, 
I'm knitting the color palette socks too, but cuff down two at a time. Nice, nice. That's good. Magic Loop. Magic Loop's my favorite. I don't like doing two at a time, though. <laughs> good for you. Yes. All right. So are we good? Do we see it? I haven't seen anyone else say it was hard to see, so I think, think we're okay. You love it. Yeah, I can't wait to see yours too. I have a finished sock. Yay. All right, y'all. Any last questions before we wrap up this live today? Got so much good stuff going on. We are going to have um, one more live event for Sock Week on Sunday, our finale to close out. It's going to be on Instagram. So. Nothing else is happening on YouTube. YouTube is closed. <laughs> it's closed for vacation. Um, no. So no more events on YouTube. The last one's going to be on Instagram where we started, where we kicked off. And it is going to be at noon Eastern time on Sunday. Early in the day because we are going to be preparing to go out of town. That's why it's early on. But you have all day to knit on your socks, so don't worry. Um, that was so easy. Thanks. You're welcome, Brigitte. I'm so glad. Can we do the fish lips kiss heel for two at a time? Absolutely. It's a great heel for that. Um, love this pattern easily and mindless. Yes, yes, it is. Um, just finished a sock. Yay, Christine. Woohoo. That's awesome. Wonderful. All right, everyone, thanks for coming to hanging out, especially if you came and hung out twice today or watched both videos. You are awesome. I so appreciate it. And I will see you on Instagram on Sunday. Bye.